Hey there folks, welcome to the channel and welcome to our series on dry cured meats for beginners where we take some of the world's most popular dry cured meats and show you how to make them at home safely, simply, and deliciously. In today's episode, we are going to be making a South African super favorite, quite possibly one of the most requested sausages we've ever been asked to do. We're going to be making South African droves, also known as South African dried sausage. This South African dry cured sausage is absolutely incredible. No nitrites are added. It requires very little equipment. I mean, technically you could process this entire sausage by hand, but if you have a KitchenAid, you know, grinder with a stuffing attachment, that would make it even easier. We are going to be drying this though in our homemade DIY biltong box, which is going to keep it free from insects and really control the drying. It's going to make our product absolutely amazing. If you'd like to see how I built my biltong box, and trust me when I say super easy, check out this link once this video is finished. Let's get started. Today's sausage is going to be all beef, but you could use game meat, you know, venison, rabbit, elk, bison. Uh, and notice my meat is a little on the lean side, and so we're going to be adding some fat from the brisket to get about a 30% fat ratio. You could do anywhere between 20% fat to 30% fat. It's completely up to you. Be sure to check out the description box for a recipe link. I'm going to have all the details, all the ingredients. And the first thing we're going to grab is our knife to get rid of some of the silver skin. We're going to be using a butchering knife. This is a Taiwanese butchering knife from Jenda Industries. This is like a scalpel. So I'm going to put a link in the description box below if you uh, want to get some more information on these knives. One thing I do want to talk about when it comes to your meat selection is that you want to try to get the freshest possible meat available. You don't want to really get meat that's old, meat that's frozen. If you can get it freshly butchered, that's the most ideal situation uh, because we are going to be hanging this uh, for a few days at room temperature and we do want our meat to be super fresh. All right, so there we go. Everything is cubed up. We're going to put this into the freezer just for a minute just to chill it a bit while we look at our spices. And this is what we're looking at when it comes to our ingredients. First and foremost, we're going to be using a sheep casing. This is a 22 24 millimeter sheep casing. We got these from the sausage maker, grade A casings, absolutely beautiful casings. And they've just been soaking in a little water with some baking soda for a couple hours. We're going to set that to the side. We're going to start off with some nutmeg. We've got toasted coriander seed. This is a very important ingredient. Not only does it bring a lot of flavor, but it's also going to bring antimicrobial, antibacterial properties. So we're going to set that to the side. We've got our clove. We're just going to grind that up in our mortar and pestle. We've got some whole pepper, corn, and then we've got our salt. Uh, as far as the liquids go, we've got brown vinegar, which is going to acidify our meat a little bit. And we've got some Worcester sauce. That's that W sauce. And that is it. That's our spice profile. Let's grab our mortar and pestle. And if you don't happen to have one of these, you can always use a food processor or a blender. But if you want information on this, check the description box. So we're just going to grind this up. All the dry spices are going to go in there. And then when we're done, we'll check on our meat. It is now time to grind. All right, so our meat's not frozen. It's just chilled. We're going to go ahead and put this through the coarsest plate that we have on our grinder. Like I said earlier, if you have a KitchenAid grinder, use the coarsest plate you have. This is a number 12 grinder from the sausage maker. Incredibly affordable, actually. Not that much more expensive than a KitchenAid grinder. Oh, and also, just so you know, you don't technically need a grinder for this stage. You can chop up your meat and fat with a knife. Just make sure you chop it up really good and your pieces aren't too big. We're going to add our spices to the mix and then we're going to come back and add our vinegar and our Worcester sauce. And here is where things get interesting because under normal circumstances, we would mix the heck out of our meat. We're looking for protein extraction. But funny thing about vinegar, that's this ingredient here. When you add it to meat, it sort of denatures the proteins and it's going to keep that meat from binding together, which is what we want for this drovas. We don't want that meat to be bound. So all I'm going to do is just run my fingers through the meat, very gently mix it, just loosely toss it. I want to just barely incorporate all these spices, just like I'm doing here. So I'm just going to run my fingers through the meat. I'm not looking for protein extraction. I just want to make sure that everything's nice and coated. 
And once I feel that it's been coated, look how loose it is. It looks great. We're going to place this into a bowl or a tray, depending on how much you're making, and just pop it in the fridge. We want our spices and our vinegar and our Worcester sauce to really penetrate that meat. And this is only going to take a couple hours. So what I like to do is just cover it with cling film and place it in the fridge for about three hours. You can leave it in there overnight if, uh, you know, you're pressed for time. So into the fridge it goes. It's now three hours later, and this is what it looks like. And I got to tell you, this smells absolutely incredible. So far, so good. I mean, this has got to be one of the easiest sausages we've ever made. We're going to pop this into our sheep casing. I'm using a sausage stuffer. If you have a KitchenAid, you could use that. If you want to do it by hand with like a funnel, that works too. And notice the first thing we're going to do is lubricate our horn with a little water. And then I'm going to try to get a little bit of water inside that casing. That's going to help lubricate it as it gets onto that horn, and it should slide on effortless. If you're having trouble sliding it on, add a little more water to the uh, casing, and it should just slip on there. I want you to see this little water bubble that we created. See that? That little water bubble is just consistently lubricating the inside of that casing, and that's allowing it to slide on super easy, but more importantly, it's going to come off super easy. Now that that's done, it's time to stuff the casing in. The trick here is to loosely stuff it. All right, it's time to link our sausages. And all I'm going to do here is find a mark on my tray. And that's where we're going to link each sausage. And that's going to keep each one of these roughly about the same size. And just so you know, you technically don't have to link this sausage. You can just hang that entire rope right on the drying rack and they'll eventually dry. But I personally find that when you link your sausages like I'm doing here, they tend to dry just a little bit more evenly and you don't have to worry about any wet spots or anything like that. So my tip is to link it, but it's totally up to you. Next, we're gonna take a sausage pricker and just prick out any air pockets. If you don't have a sausage pricker, you could use a sharp needle and all that's gonna do is tighten up that casing and have it adhere a little bit better to the meat while it's drying. Let's look at our biltong box. This is a very simple construction. And as you can see right here, we've got our wooden rods and I've wrapped cling film around each one of the rods. And that's just to keep it clean while we're hanging our drovers. We don't want to get them all nasty and dirty. Otherwise, we'll have to pull them out and clean them. So that's just going to save us a lot of time later. We've also got some paper towels at the very bottom to catch any, you know, drippings, any juice uh, that might come from our sausage during the first day or two while it's drying. And really, there's no rhyme or reason when it comes to hanging your sausage in your biltong box. You just want to make sure that they're not touching each other. Uh, and so I'm just going to space them out in such a way where we've got plenty of room for that airflow to circulate around them and that heat to rise between them. And that's going to help and make sure that they dry evenly. So there we go. Once we got our light turned on, that's going to generate heat, pull air in from the bottom. And that air is going to rise. Basically, it's going to be pulled upwards because the top of our biltong box has got a little computer fan that's basically drawing air out. This entire process, this whole setup actually is going to provide a nice steady flow of warm air. It's protected from the insects and it's going to dry our sausages beautifully. So now we wait. Our sausages are going to hang in our biltong box for three to five days. But if you don't have a biltong box, you can hang this in an area that's got, you know, as a gentle breeze, temperature around 75 Fahrenheit or 23 Celsius. So, you know, maybe your kitchen by a kitchen window or your garage. Just make sure to protect your sausage from the insects. All right, our South African dried sausage, our Droevas, has been drying now for about four days in our biltong box. And what's great about this sausage is that the amount of time you let it dry is completely up to you. I mean, it just totally depends on your own personal preference. What I would suggest doing is start tasting it at around day three. At around day three, if you use a 22 millimeter sheep casing, you would have in essence lost about 45 to 50% moisture, totally ready to eat. Your Droves is going to be packed with flavor. It's going to be very tender. And if you like the way it tastes and you like the mouthfeel and the texture, then you are done. But if you want it a little bit drier, if you want the spices to be a little bit more forward, then let it dry one more day and give it a taste. Because each day that you dry it, you're going to lose a little bit more moisture 
the sausage is going to get drier, the texture is going to change, and those spices are going to become more concentrated. All right, so just to let you know, I've had this sausage at every stage of drying, day three, four, five, and six, and I personally like somewhere around day number four. I find that for me, it's got the right mouthfeel, the right flavor, and it's absolutely perfect. So let's go ahead and take it out of the Biltong box, open it up so that you can see what it looks like, and then give it a taste. All right, folks, our South African Drovers is ready. Let's give it a go. Oh, wow. That smells very similar to Biltong, which is a good thing because Biltong is one of my absolute all-time favorite dry cured meats. Matter of fact, if you'd like to know how we made Biltong, check it out. Very similar spice profile. I think the nutmeg and the clove are kind of lingering in the background. Wow, that smells awesome. I'm loving the marbling and it looks like it dried absolutely perfect. So let's just give it a bite. Mm. Wow, this is ridiculous. I mean, very tasty. I gotta be honest, if you want a taste of Africa at home, you gotta make this. I mean, this is the real deal. Great flavor, it's very fatty. And so you get that unctuous quality every time you take a bite. And it's got this strange combination of firm but tender at the exact same time. If you wanna get into dry cured meats, right? If you wanna get into meat preservation, but you don't have a whole lot of equipment, this has definitely got to be in your top three projects to do first because it's easy, it doesn't require a lot of equipment, it doesn't take very long, and the rate of failure is incredibly low. And for me, that's kind of like the perfect dry cured meat project. I hope you get a chance to make this South African Droevas. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video or got something out of it, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And you know, if you're new to this channel and you liked what you saw and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.